Israel will turn up. In a voice of Israel. So I want to say in Italian, I don't speak Italian. So I would play the voice. Can you please the one please?
If I just remove those, it's basically a default fields and a sign button and of course the other readers. So it's pretty simple. So that's the business model. So try to look for what's the core job of your product. Can you imagine what's your core job of your product can sell? And coming back to the next point, I want to talk about this customer journey map. One way to analyze the problem we saw about the problem with the ATM machine, so we could have mapped it out. Whoever those who designed those ticket machines, they could have mapped those customer experience, and they could have seen where is the pain point is. And not just looking at the happy part, looking at all possible parts like where things can go wrong, things can go something unexpected. For example, um, since I'm talking about the voice interface, when I map out this journey, I can see a new cases where using a voice interface I can solve some of the problem. I'm going to show you an app demo where I'm using it for my fitness. It's called the 30 day fitness where it basically has some kind of animation of to do the exercise and after that, like when I'm completing my exercise, I need to use my app to update to go to the next step. I would really like if I have a voice interface for that because in the middle of my exercise time, I don't want to touch my app because my hands are wet, I'm already in the, doing the exercise. It would be really nice to see uh, if I can communicate with the voice interface. Jumping leg tucks, 30 seconds. Go. Squat reaches. As you can see, I need to tap it for each next step. It would be really nice if I can interact with voice interface. Jump. Something similarly like we are staying currently uh, from past two days in this model. So now they have like a customer support for using WhatsApp. So try to think of in your customer journey how you can enhance the user experience. That's one more channel. And adding to this, there's a voice interface, uh, Alexa, Amazon Alexa, they released something called as like a Amazon for hospitality. So it's going to change how the customer interactions with the host, uh, hotel. You work hard to delight your guests and improve your staff's productivity. We can make it easier. Introducing Alexa for hospitality. Until one day, it all 
went out of control. Once this was a peaceful place, until one day it all went out of control. Once this was a peaceful place, until one day it all went out of control. How many of you think it's a wise effect? The person here? How many of you think it's a C? What about D? Okay, the answer is I don't know. <laughs> the, I, I really want to demonstrate this. Just looking at the hearing the voice, you have a mental picture that it's a lady, it's maybe a lady of 30 to 40 years, so you have a mental personality. What, who's, who's, who's talking behind it. It's the same thing for voice interface. We have a personality who's going to be like interacting with our voice interface. And coming back to the characters sticks off those personality. For example, if I'm interacting with some voice application, which is a backing, I would expect it to be more trustworthy, more secure words, and I would, I would really like to see it's not funny, it's more serious, because I'm, I'm being in a serious business. And imagine if you have a voice interface for your kind of a social apps, so you would like to have it more like a kind of uh, friendly words. So it depends on the kind of words you use in your web design, or it depends on the content you use for the voice interface or chatbots, should be reflect your character. And one of, the, one of the talk, I just took a picture from our first talk. It says the personality is consistent of human characteristics. So, what's, <coughs> think about your product. Think about your product. What's the human characteristics you can give it to your product? How can you make it more human? That's what the human centric design is about. Thinking about human first, not about creating things of de devices first. And since we have a lot of developers here, how many of you know there's an SSML for the voice interface? So for example, um, it's a speech synthesis uh, markup language. You could use it today, uh, both for the Amazon Alexa and also for the Google Assistant. Basically, we can have a pause. So let's play this. There is a three second pause here. <coughs> so then the speech continues. And there's like a use case where I really want to, we want to spell out something. Here is a word spelled out, H-E-L-L-O. So we have more control over the words. And applying this principle to the personality, to the product, can you imagine what could be the personality for Netflix? What could be the personality for Netflix? Can you do this? A movie library. So uh, there's a UX researcher called Eric Hall. Uh, she, she talks about uh, how can you create something that more personality for your product. Uh, she's going to kind of give you, like, for example, in this case, I've been it for the Netflix, I'm going to read it. If you were a person out there in the world serving our customer, our job would be movie librarian. And customer would describe us as the most savior of any in that profession. We never wanted to come off as an arrow. It clearly gives their product strategy and it clearly gives how they want to think their product is. The product vision is clear. They want to make give a lot of choice to the user. They don't want to, never want to feel it like they are very narrow. So can you think of what is your product? Can you think of product personality for the product you're designing? And there's one more uh, very nice quote uh, again by Alan Battle, and currently works for Invision now. When I design, I work very hard to make the interface experience feel like there's a human on the other end, not a computer. And there's one more on a similar direction. Let's think of our designs not as a facade for interaction, but as the people with whom our audience can have an inspired conversation. Products are people too. Uh, so, it's really important about the personality. 
And let's look at some of the parts which you can see these personality. For example, Slack. I'm talking about the Slack, the landing page when you enter the Slack.com. So that that only one call to action button. Uh, if you look at their website, they have a, they're telling a story about uh, the Slack. They're nowhere telling about try Slack. And only at the end of the page they're talking about try Slack. And sometimes it's, it's, it's about uh, it's about four or four page. They are telling about clearly that there's something wrong. It's a better way of telling something wrong. And they're also offering some kind of a help. If I click on the help center, there is a, a whole support page you can check more details. It's the same thing for the voice interface. If something goes wrong, how are you going to respond? as a voice interface and uh, interface. So you have to prepare for the worst case scenarios. And also you need to provide a help in order to support your user so they can ask how can they use your product better. It's more like you can think of it's more like a since we are more developers, it's more like a test driven development. So we write some unit test case, we make some test pass, and we also pass some negative cases where it failed. And is our system behave right way, or how it behaves when there is unexpected input is given to the uh, function? So it's the same way. Uh, another example of uh, medium, uh, uh, medium.com. So when you subscribe for the medium.com and look at the words, just a little bit of work, and it feels so natural. It feels as if I'm dealing with more uh, physically in person. So this is personality. This is what I feel as a person behind your product. I feel it's more human. And you are in the first. So it's more using these right content words makes <coughs> being more human. And I need to have an example of, uh, for example, the, I talked about all the happy parts and the negative parts and also the unexpected things. For example, Google search also does a good job. Uh, for example, if I search something, it gives some info results. If I do some typo, it also gives some kind of uh, suggestions for me that did you mean this? It's a fault tolerance. In test cases, if you think of in uh, test driven development, it's about negative cases. How, how do you respond to it? And sometimes it will happen that there could be unexpected inputs. So how do you respond to it? Can you, can you think of for your products, how the interactions with the user, can you think of happy parts, can you think of what things can go wrong, can you think of what unexpected things can happen. And, and developing for voice and face is very easy and it's challenging to develop some simple applications. For example, this application, uh, voice and face, uh, soccer drills is developed by a seven years uh, kid. And look at this. Hi, my name is Chloe. That's my name. But I'm Sydney. I just made a skill for Alexa called Soccer Drills, and it would be awesome if you try it for me. It's really easy. You just say, Alexa, open Soccer Drills. Please check it out and you'll leave me a review. Hopefully, you do. Thanks! So, this a uh, Demo, I played around with yesterday. Alexa, open Soccer Drills. Welcome to Soccer Drills, version 2.0. Now with nine unique drills, name a drill, or say what are my drills. What are my drills? You can say tick tocks, toe touches, walking toe touches, juggling, roll back and kick, soul rolls, reverse toe touches or rotating toe touches, name a drill. Or say, what are my drills? Juggling. Pick up the ball and throw it into the air. Let it bounce once. Then, kick it and catch it with your hands. Do your best to prevent it from hitting the ground using your feet and knees. Now let's try five in a row. Ready, go. One. Two. Three. Four, 
Five. Great work. Name a drill. Or say what are my drills. Stop. I also know. Thank you for using soccer drills to improve your skill. And also, it's not just an importance of voice in the process. It's really kind of you, you know, you can interact without touching physically. And it's really important for the disabled people. For example, this one is done by the BBC. Um, and you can see how the old lady interacts with uh, Alexa. Music. Yes, good idea. Some music Of the testings, they're using the tool for voice UX, the one I showed now. 
let's have a look at our past workshops. I would like to visit it.
So it's, it's about you can, you can really play around with it, and you can quickly add your script, and you can also choose a different language. And uh, yeah, so thank you.